focus now on a very special occasion in South Africa. The arch is 90. It's truly something to celebrate. In about half an hour's time, we're going to be crossing uh, to Cape Town for the 11th Desmond Tutu International Peace Lecture. This year, it will be delivered by four extraordinary people. Women's and children's rights activist, Grasa Michelle, chair of the elders and former president of Ireland, Mary Robinson, the Dalai Lama, Tibet's highest spiritual leader, and South Africa's former public protector, Professor Tuli Madunsela, who joins me now. Prof, it's always such a wonderful pleasure to talk to you. Uh, this is an amazing uh, occasion to be part of. How are you feeling? I'm overjoyed to be in this galaxy of stars. And of course, it is always a privilege to celebrate, to celebrate Archbishop Desmond Tutu. He has given so much to us and to be still giving so much to humanity at 90 is truly a blessing. Yeah, it is remarkable, and, and he you know, still has that absolutely wonderful smile. Even though he's in a wheelchair, he still looks uh, very excited to be around people. And uh, such an extraordinary man. Um, talk to me about the tributes that you pay to a man such as Desmond Tutu, who has led a brave and remarkable life. The emphasis of my tribute is recognizing his lifetime quest of speaking truth to power on matters of justice, integrity, forgiveness, and peace. And one of his famous sayings is that there'll be no peace without justice. And in, in so doing, he has always motivated us to work towards social justice, to eliminate corruption and make sure that democracies all over the world work for every human being and that everyone is made to know that they count. You know, I think the world remembers him most for uh, his strong voice against apartheid. Um, but of course, he's still speaking out today. Uh, Alan Busak uh, was speaking to Aisha Ismail, our reporter, earlier, and, and he told her that the Arch is very concerned about what's happening in South Africa and still very worried about the path uh, that we are taking. Um, how has he been a mentor to you? How has he inspired you? Particularly, I'm thinking in your role as public protector. He inspired me and many others to understand that there are consequences to speaking truth to power. But there are also consequences for society if we are silent. And from him I've understood that evil triumphs not because the evildoers are the most powerful and formidable force in society or in the world, Evil triumphs when those who can stop it do nothing to stop it. And in his case, he used a space created for him by the fact that he was educated, which gives him privilege, and the fact that he was a man of the cloth with a very high ranking to give voice to these concerns about justice. And you're right that it started with questioning apartheid, when democracy came, he understood that democracy did not mean we were now equal. He used his voice to raise issues about inequality, about poverty. But more importantly, he has been a thorn in the flesh of the corrupt and greedy people that find their way into government spaces. Do you think that we as ordinary South Africans are living his legacy, you know, you smiled when you said he was, he's a thorn in the flesh of the corrupt. Um, and and it's, a, it's a bravery that he seems to have. It, it doesn't mean it's not difficult to do. Do you think that we need to be a little bit braver like Archbishop Tutu at times? Absolutely. And, and as I said, he, he made us understand that there are consequences for speaking truth to power because during apartheid, he was hounded by the apartheid forces. And when his own friend, Nelson Mandela, took over, he still, when necessary, raised his voice when he thought things were not going in the right direction. And then after Nelson Mandela passed on, 
he still questioned corruption in government, lack of integrity, and also he questioned the failure to make progress on poverty and inequality. He also, of course, incurred um, some enemies by speaking out on the way Israel is treating the Palestinians. Talk to me about uh, the people that you are sharing, and I understand it's a virtual stage with uh, tonight. Uh, have you actually got to meet any of them? Are you all, have you all pre-recorded your messages because of COVID times and it's all being done virtually? Just explain how it works. Some of it has been pre-recorded. I have met everyone except the Dalai Lama, and it's, it, it is my sadness and uh, at, at two occasions on which I could have met him. This is the third one, and it, it didn't work out. But I've met Mary Robinson, who is the president of the World Justice Forum for many years, and I'm a member, and Mama Grassa Michelle, we all know her, and we have collaborated on, on several matters. So I do feel like I'm in the galaxy of stars, but it's not surprising Archbishop Tutu himself became a star, not by seeking to become a star. He became a star by putting himself out there on behalf of the people whenever he felt that there was injustice. Wonderful message. And we look forward to, to watching it all tonight when it kicks off at around 7 o'clock. And thank you very much for chatting to us this evening. Always such a pleasure, ha pleasure having you on SA tonight. Thank you very much, Professor Tuli Modinsela. She is, of course, former public protector and chair of social justice at Stellenbosch University. And, of course, she's one of the four human rights beacons who are delivering the 11th Desmond Tutu International Peace Lecture, which kicks off at 7 o'clock this evening.